Did you know that us human beings have been travelling out of the Earth's atmosphere and into space for 60 years? That's right, 60 years ago this month, a Russian cosmonaut became the first person to successfully travel to space and complete one whole orbit of the Earth aboard a Vostok space capsule. I'm Oliver White of Ground Base Space, and to mark the 60 year anniversary of human spaceflight, this is the first of a series where we're going to look at all the human rated craft designs that have or still are carrying people into space from the Vostok 1 mission in 1961 all the way to 2021 with the likes of Crew Dragon and Spaceship 2. So, before we dive in, what do we mean when we say human rated? Put simply, human rated spacecraft are spacecraft that have been successfully proven and are trusted to safely carry human beings into space. And as I said before, we human beings have been leaving our planet for six decades now, and it all started with the Vostok 3KA series of space capsules. Vostok capsules were designed and produced by SP Korolev Rocket and Space Corporation Energia, also known as RSC Energia, or just simply Energia, and were operated by the Soviet Union's Soviet Space Program. Vostok 3KA capsules were made up of a spherical descent module that held one cosmonaut, scientific instruments and an escape system attached to a bioconical instrument module which contained the craft's fuel and engines. Several iterations of the Vostok design carried satellites, but it was the Vostok 3KA design that would be used to carry humans. While being designed to carry crew, Vostok capsules were not however designed to carry their crews all the way back down to the ground. The capsules made very rough landings and it was thought that crews would not survive or be severely injured upon impact, so Vostok crews instead ejected from the capsule at 7,000 meters or 23,000 feet and made the rest of their descent by parachute. The Vostok 3KA series flew six crewed flights over a three-year period, with the first crewed mission, Vostok 1, taking place on the 12th of April 1961 carrying cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin into low Earth orbit, famously making Yuri the first human to ever fly in space. The last Vostok mission, Vostok 6, flew on the 16th of June 1963, carrying the first woman into space, cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova. Radio Moscow announced her flight on a worldwide broadcast at the time, and here is a clip of the broadcast, but please note that it isn't the clearest of recordings. This is Radio Moscow. This is Radio Moscow. Here is a special announcement. For the first time in history, a woman has gone up into outer space. At 12.30 Moscow time, the spaceship Vostok Six, piloted by a woman, a Soviet citizen, Kyrgyzstan. Project Mercury was the USA's first human spaceflight program, attempting to beat the Soviet Union to having the first person in space. The Mercury capsule was designed and built for NASA by McDonnell Aircraft Corporation. Six crewed Mercury missions took place between May of 1961 and May of 1963. The first crewed Mercury flight actually took place only a few weeks after the Russian Vostok 1 flight. On May the 5th, 1961, mission Mercury Redstone 3 launched from Cape Canaveral's Launch Complex 5, carrying astronaut Alan Shepard aboard a Mercury capsule that he named Freedom 7. Shepard's flight was a 15-minute suborbital flight, and it wouldn't be until nine months later 
that America made it to orbit with Mercury Atlas 6, carrying John Glenn aboard Mercury Capsule Friendship 7 on an orbital flight that lasted for just under five hours. The last Mercury flew on May 15th, 1963. Astronaut Leroy Cooper Jr. completed a one-day and ten-hour orbital flight that really pushed his capsule, Faith 7, to its limits. After Faith 7's 19th orbit, many of the capsule systems had begun to fail, but Cooper made a safe splashdown at 11.24pm UTC on May 16, 1963. On each flight, the Mercury astronauts named their capsules. In order of launch date, they were named Freedom 7, Liberty Bell 7, Friendship 7, Aurora 7, Sigma 7, and Faith 7. The 7 at the end of each name was to represent the 7 astronauts chosen to fly the Mercury missions, though astronaut Donald Slayton never flew on a Mercury mission. All of the capsules were recovered, though Liberty Bell 7, the second capsule to fly, was not recovered until 1999, after it sank on its initial splashdown in 1961. But all six capsules can now be seen on display in museums across the USA. The X-15 was a single-seat, air-launched, suborbital, hypersonic rocket-powered space plane that was in use by NASA and the US Air Force between 1962 and 1968. Three X-15s were built by two companies, with most of the craft being built by North American Aviation, while Reaction Motors built the craft's engines. X-15s flew 199 times, but only 13 of those flights were space flights. To launch, X-15s were carried under and dropped from the wing of a B-52 mothership plane. In July of 1963, pilot Joe Walker reached an altitude of 100 kilometers, granting him recognition as an astronaut and joining the ranks of the first people to fly in space. On the 15th of November 1967, test pilot Major Michael Adams was tragically killed during Flight 191. He was piloting X-15-3 which entered a hypersonic spin while descending. This resulted in the craft breaking up at an altitude of 60,000 feet or 18 kilometers. With the speed the craft had been traveling, wreckage of X-15-3 was scattered over a 50 mile square radius. In May of 2004, a monument was placed at the location the cockpit had been found, close to Johannesburg, California, and Major Adams was posthumously awarded his astronaut wings and his name was added to the astronaut memorial. X-15 flight number 200 had been planned, but a large number of technical problems, combined with six flight cancellations due to bad weather, saw the X-15 program come to an end. X-15-1 is now on display at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, DC, while X-15A2 can be seen at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. The Vauxhall spacecraft flew in 1964 and 1965, and was designed and built by RSC Energia for the Soviet Union. Developed as a follow-on from the Vostok capsule, Vauxhall 1 was a three-person craft, while Vauxhall 2 would carry only two people. The design was very similar to the Vostok design, with a spherical descent module that houses the crew and scientific instruments, and a conical equipment module that houses the propellant and engine systems. Vauxhod 1, officially named Vostok 3K5, was a three-person craft. The one-person ejection seat of the Vostok was removed, creating space for a three-person couch design. However, space was so tight that the crew couldn't even wear a space suit, instead wearing standard flight suits for their voyage. The initial design for Vauxhod 1 had been for a two-person design that would allow the crew to wear spacesuits, but political pressures saw the design change to a three-person design, and the lack of space meant that no escape system was built into it, meaning the crew could not escape if an emergency had taken place during launch or re-entry. Vauxhall 1 launched on the 12th of October 1964, and was notable for setting a number of historical firsts. It was the first space flight to carry more than one person, the first space flight without spacesuits, the first space flight to carry an engineer, and the first space flight to carry a medic. 
The crew was made up of Commander and Pilot Vladimir Komarov, Engineer Konstantin Fyokstov, and Medic Doctor Boris Yegorov. The Voxhod 1 flight lasted a little over 24 hours, landing on the 13th of October 1964 at 0747 UTC. The Voxhod 2 capsule was a two-person design, and like with the Voxhod 1, the one-person ejection seat was not present, and two non-ejecting seats were instead used. Again, this meant that escape during a launch or landing emergency was not possible. Voxhod 2 was also different to Voxhod 1 in more ways than just the number of seats installed. It had an inflatable airlock that once deployed allowed for one of the Voxhod 2 crew to perform EVAs or extravehicular activities. Voxhod 2 launched on the 18th of March 1965, crewed by pilots Pavel Believ and Alexei Leonov. About 90 minutes into Voxhod 2's flight, at the completion of their first orbit, Alexei Leonov became the first person to conduct an EVA after he made a 12-minute spacewalk using the inflatable airlock. The mission lasted for a total of 26 hours and 2 minutes, landing on the 19th of March 1965 at 0902 UTC. Voxhod 1 is on display at the Science Museum of London, while Voxhod 2 is displayed in the Energia Museum in Korolev, Russia. And that's where we're going to end this episode. In the next one we'll be covering the second half of the 1960s and the 1970s with the likes of the Gemini, Soyuz and Apollo spacecraft. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts in the comments as I'm always super grateful to know what you think. And don't forget to click that like button and subscribe if you enjoy what you see here. Again, thank you so so much for watching. I've been Oliver White of Ground Based Space, and remember, keep looking up at the stars, because who knows, one day, we might just meet each other up there. Take care guys.